Well, hello to you too. <laughs> That's cute. Hello. Praise the Lord. Greetings, greetings, greetings to you, the people of God. Thank you for coming. Thank you for gathering. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. To him be all of the praise. To him be all of the glory. We honor him. Can you please come in the room with the praise? Hallelujah. Can you share? Bless the name of the Lord. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome, God's people. Welcome in the room, everybody. Welcome. Class is in session. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome to November. <laughs> Welcome to November. Yes, Lord. Glory to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We bless and honor the Lord tonight. To him, to him, to him be all the praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. Good evening. Hello, hello, hello. Good evening, Elder Khan. God bless you, woman of God. God bless you and your family on tonight. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. Hallelujah. Wonderful, kind, gracious, heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He's worthy to be praised. As we gather on tonight, hallelujah. As we gather on tonight, let us enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Hallelujah. Good evening to you. Um, Sister Reed, it's good to have you in the room with us on tonight. We praise God for who he is tonight. Hallelujah. Victory. Victory. We praise the Lord for being a conqueror. We praise God for being a king, a Lord, our savior. We praise and honor the Lord tonight for who he is. Hallelujah. Welcome to November. We praise God for November. Hallelujah. A grateful month. A, a month of harvest. A month of praise. Hallelujah. Thank you for coming in the room with the praise. We want to say welcome to everybody who will watch this on YouTube. We say welcome to everyone that will watch this uh, 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 as a replay on Facebook. We say thank you to those that will be joining us and watching this coming in from um, Instagram. Praise the name of the Lord for you that are in the United States and those that are in the nations abroad. God bless you. Our good God is a good God. Yes, praise God for November. You made it all the way through to November. Hallelujah. I'm coming in like this. Praise the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. And we adore you, Lord, for your faithfulness. That he was faithful to us for the seven days that we journeyed in his presence to seek him, to praise him to pray, to make petition, to make requests. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord. Good evening to you, Minister Lester. Praise the name of the Lord for you, woman of God. I do love the Lord, and he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We glorify the name of the Lord. Tonight, we are going to go... Uh, um, um, into class on tonight, but I really just wanted to talk to everyone on tonight and answer some questions about the fast. But as we get ready to do that, we're going to stay diligent. The Bible says that the hand of the diligent will rule. Did you hear what I said? The Bible says that the hand of the diligent will rule. 
And so sometimes people don't see the hand of God and they don't see God show up in a phenomenal way is because they came seeking just the loaves and the fish and without seeking him. But the Bible says that the hand of the diligent will rule. And so I told you the beginning of the fast that God will look at your heart. He looks at your heart to see if you just want what's in his hand or do you want to be transformed? What you are really praying, do you believe? Uh, do you have that mustard seed faith residing on the inside of you? And so that's what God is looking for tonight. He's looking for pay faithful people. He's looking for people who will bless him in the good times and the hard times. The Bible says um, that, that Jesus said that if you will suffer with me, then you will and you will also reign with me. One thing about the Lord, he is true to his word. He said, if you are ashamed of me before men, then so will I be ashamed of you before my heavenly father. And I don't know about you, but I ever endeavor to prove that um, I love the Lord. And in areas where I am struggling to love him, I want to be on the altar. I want to be on the potter's wheel until he takes the heart out of obeying him, until he takes the heart out of loving him. My God, that's what it means to pursue God. That's what it means to seek the Lord. Hallelujah. Indeed, indeed, indeed. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you haven't already, please share with your friends, share on your Facebook page. Share with someone in their inbox, share with someone in a text message, and let them know that they can join us for prayer on tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. All he requires is mustard seed faith. Indeed, woman of God, that's all he requires. That's all he requires. And we love him tonight. And we praise him tonight and we glorify the name of the Lord on tonight. Victory is ours. Hallelujah. Victory is ours. Hallelujah. Can you come in with the praise? If you pray in the spirit, please pray in the spirit as we offer up to the Lord a sacrifice of praise with the fruit of our lips. As we begin to pray, as we begin to think on the goodness of the Lord, as we get prepared for our week, as we set a stage and a standard for the month of November. Praise the name of Jesus. Can you come in with the praise? Hallelujah. Can you offer unto the Lord? Lord, I thank you. Lord, I love you. Hallelujah. Can you tell the Lord? Can you set an atmosphere for your own house? Lord, I come, Lord God, seeking you for yet... Uh, 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 another day of, of grace, another day. I come seeking you, Lord God, for another day's journey of wisdom. I come, Lord God, just to praise your name. I came to lift up your name. I came to bless you. I came, Lord God, uh, so that you would hear my voice. I came that you would smell the aroma of my prayers. I came, Lord God, to activate, Lord God, my voice in the earth realm. I came to, tonight to be a portal, Lord God, saying that you can use me, saying that you can use me, saying, Lord God, that whatever you want to do on the earth, Lord God, I pray, Lord God, Matthew 6, Lord God, tonight, let thy kingdom come and let thy will be done in, heaven, in earth as it is in heaven. Lord, I thank you right now, Lord God, that we desire your will to be done in the nation of America. We desire your will to be done in our lives, in the lives of our children, in the lives, oh God, of our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren and the generations to come. We desire your works. We desire your blessings. We desire your mercy in the name of Jesus. The election is two days to come, Lord God. And we just ask right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, for your grace in this election. We're praying, Lord God, in the name of the Lord, that you would station angels. We send angels. We send angels. Lord God, to every voting precinct, Father, we thank you for protecting the people. We come against violence 
and demonic presences and forces, oh God, that will try to bring harm to your people. Let a blood covering, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, let a fiery hedge of protection, Lord God, protect your people from guns, from fights, Lord God, from, from, from brutal uh, uh, crimes. Father, protect them in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you right now in the name of the Lord to intervene. You said the kingdom of heaven suffer violence the violence take it by force father we come to intercede Lord. you can count on us you can count on us to pray lord your word says in the in the book of isaiah uh that you were seeking for a man and isaiah said here am i use me we come tonight lord asking that you will use us lord use our lips lord god in the name of jesus use our lips lord god as bricks as bats as cannons as missiles lord into the camps of the enemy we declare that there will be no violence at the polls. We thank you right now, Lord God, and we speak, Lord God, to every violent, every cruel, and every wicked force in the name of the in the Lord that you will bow down to the name of Jesus. Thank you right now, Lord. You ought to pray that for your county. You ought to pray that for your region. You ought to pray that in the name of Jesus for your city. Father, we thank you right now. We come in agreement, Lord. Hallelujah. Letting thy will be done. Let your will be done in the name of Jesus. Let your will be done, Lord God. Let there be no scandal. We come, in a, we come against every scandal that will come, Lord God, in this voting process. We ask you right now in the name of Jesus that you would send the armies of justice, Lord God, to fight on our behalf, that they will lift up a standard on behalf behalf of your people, God, from the White House, oh God, and every other house, Lord God, surrounding. We thank you right now, Lord God, that you would cover, that you would protect. Lord God, we thank you right now. You said, pray for them that have the rule over us. Father, despite of what we understand, what we like or don't like, we ask you right now in the name of Jesus, let wisdom come, Lord God, from those that are in authority. We're praying, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, that you would get in their minds, that you would get in their hearts, Lord God, that you would get in their decision making. Father, if you were able to touch the heart of Pharaoh, who was a pagan worshiper, Lord, and you were you touched him to know what was right and what was wrong concerning Sarah and Abraham, we pray the same and so shall it be, Lord God, for this nation. We we pray, Lord God, that the heart of the king is in your hands tonight, Lord, that you are turning it like a river in the name of Jesus. In spite of who is being voted for, God, it is your hand of sovereignty. It is your hand of sovereignty, Lord God, that we pray, Lord God, in the name of Jesus for help, 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 help every congressman, every legislator. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, every senator, Father, in the name of the Lord, we pray, God, for every seat and every office. Give them a conviction that will serve you. Give them a conviction to know what is right. God, give them a conviction, Lord God, to work on behalf of the people. Give them a conviction to rule and honor. Give them a conviction to rule, Lord God, in integrity. Give them a conviction to rule from the word of God. In the name of Jesus, every judge. Hallelujah. That sits on the throne, Lord God, in the court system. God, we are praying for a heart of conviction. Drive out corruption. Corruption. In the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Visit every person tonight, God, as they make ready, Father, in the name of Jesus, to take new seats. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, in every political aspect, we thank you right now, Lord. Father, we thank you that you can count on our voices, O oh Lord, to pray and to ask you to intervene on what's going on in this nation. We thank you, Lord, that you always hear and that you always answer the prayer that is prayed according to your word. Your word says that when we pray according to your will, that you hear us, Lord, that you hear us, that you hear us, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. We ask you right now, those that are making decisions on behalf of our children and our children's education, 
intervene, Lord, and then intervene in the name of Jesus. Those that are making decisions for our health care and, and all of the drug, oh Lord God, administration, intervene tonight, God. You know what's on the earth. You know what's coming on the earth. You know those that need help, God. God, you know that we need you as we've never needed you before. We're asking you. We're asking you. We're asking you in the school systems, Lord. God, we need your help. We need your help. In the drug administration, we need your help. Lord God, in the Agriculture Association, we need your help. They're making decisions on what go into our food. Lord, as we sleep at night, God, we don't know what's going on in these places. And so we're asking you, Lord, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, to move on our behalf. I pray a hedge of protection, Lord God, around the household of faith, those that know you. Lord God, those that are seeking you, those, Lord God, that are yet to come to know you, Lord. You said that you have taken you when we pray, Lord, and when we repent, when we seek you, Lord God, you said that you have taken a uh, 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 sickness out of our bread, Lord God, and out of our water. We thank you, Lord God, that as we eat, as we sleep, Lord God, we thank you that your word governs our lives and we believe, Lord God, that it is so. Lord, I thank you that every person, Lord God, as they return to eating, Lord, let them have a sharp discernment, Lord God, that if the Holy Spirit, Lord God, gives them an unction not to eat a thing because it's poisoned because it's in, infected or because it's Lord God not wholesome or healthy. Father, I just thank you right now in the name of Jesus, God, that we will not consume, hallelujah, deadly or poisonous things. And your word says, even if we do, Lord God, it will not harm us. We give you the glory tonight. We give you the honor tonight in Jesus' holy name. Can you put a radical praise on the screen? on tonight. Can you put a radical praise on the screen on tonight? Um, coming into agreement, coming into agreement, come in into agreement. Can you put an arousing amen on the screen? Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so the time changed tonight. Somebody should have called and told me that the time changed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you for coming in agreement. Um, somebody should have told me that the time changed today. Uh, I got in the car today and the clock um, in the car was an hour ahead. Uh, and so it was only then that I realized that um, time had changed. I usually get an email. I usually get a notification or something. And um, today I just want to let you know uh, that, that I was on another time schedule. So I want to say thank you for you being on time tonight. Hallelujah. I was going to be on time for the broadcast, but just driving around today, um, I was looking, um, making sure that I was in the right place at the right time. And um, I saw today that time um, fell back one hour. So um, I trust and pray that you are governing yourselves accordingly. Listen, on tonight, on tonight, on tonight, there is an encouraging word that I just want to briefly share. But before we get into that, I I really just want to ask you, um, were there any questions from the fast? Like, did you have any experiences that you wanted to ask about? Or did you have any comments specifically on the fast that from the fast that you wanted to ask? I don't want to uh, mow forward and uh, we not be on the same page or on the same accord. Were there any questions? Please don't be shy. Uh, we're family on here. So if there were any questions, let me know. Uh, write your questions in the, in the comments and I want to address those questions. Um, I do want to say for those of you that were on the fast and you, um, um, feel like nothing happened. Um, if you were on the fast and you feel like you felt like nothing ha has taken place, uh, I want to encourage you that um, 
that the Lord heard your prayers. I want to encourage you that when you fast and pray, the Bible, um, uh, when you pray uh, and after you've done the will of God, the Lord says you have need of patience. So if you didn't get a breakthrough or if you didn't hear the Lord speak to you, you have to know in faith that your seed was planted. And 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 if you followed the guidelines that we talk, you talk for sessions and sessions, if you follow the guidelines, then you fast it correctly. Praise the name of the Lord. If you fast it correctly, but you still have some comments or that you have some questions that you want to ask, I want to address those questions because there's another fasting date that is coming up on the calendar. And that is um, November 19th through the 21st, which is a three-day fast. Um, if God has uh, talked to you or ministered to you um, about getting to Dr. Nixon, if the Lord has talked to you or he's spoken to you about continuing your fast, I got, I got um, two uh, inbox messages uh, uh, of, of people saying that, yes, the Lord has asked me to um, continue my fast. Um, um, if you have any questions, or if you feel like you didn't, you, you, you didn't get anything, um, if you feel like nothing happened, any questions that you want to have, any comments that you want to make, I'm here to encourage you on tonight that we are all family. We are all family and you have need of patience. You have need of patience. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, God. So I'm looking for your questions on tonight. I'm looking for your questions about the fast. Some of you fasted for the first time, let me know. If this was your first time on a corporate fast, uh, be a brave soul and let me know. If this was your first time fasting corporately, let me know. If this was your first time fasting for seven days, um, I just want to recognize and acknowledge how good God is um, in your lives. Hallelujah. If you just want to let me know that you needed this and that it was a blessing to your life, I'm looking for your questions and your comments. I'm looking for that interaction. I'm looking to help where it needs to be help. Um, I don't want to just keep going on and doing things that are irrelevant for you or irrelevant to the course and the path. I, I know it was God led. I know it was God directed. And I know a lot of you got blessed. But if you're in a place where you feel like you need help, I want to cover that. If you feel like you need um, to ask a question or you desire to just make a comment, I'm looking for those comments on tonight. Please um, speak up. Don't be shy. Praise the name of the Lord. I do want to address those questions. Praise the Lord. Dr. Nixon says, thank you for calling the fast. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I just don't want to take for granted um, that 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 everybody was, you know, was mature enough to understand what was happening. Minister Lester said it was a blessing. Dr. Nixon said, thank you for calling the fast. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Um, if you felt like uh, uh, the guidelines helped you, um, let me know if the guidelines helped you. I'm ready for the next fast. I will fast before I will fast before the corporate fast again. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's, that's great to know. We are to live a fasted life. We are to live a fasted life. And um, we are not to give up. Um, the Lord uh, definitely looks at our hearts to see where our diligence is. Where our diligence is. Sister Carolyn Reed says, um, it was well needed. Got a spiritual tune-up. Amen. Praise God. And one thing a fast will do, it will tune up your hearing. It will tune up and minister any to any spirit. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter number four, that after Jesus had fasted those 40 days and he encountered the things that he did, the Bible said that the angels came and ministered to him. 
praise the name of Jesus. So just know, even after you have consecrated and after you have um, gone back to um, your eating patterns, just know spiritually that the angels of the Lord are ministering to you to give you strength, to give you help wherever you need it. Is there anything else? Were there were any questions about the regiment? Was there any questions about the guidelines? Um, are, are you at a place to where you just, you know, was it was it difficult? I really just want to minister and talk to those that um, um, really had some um, questions, and and I want to have some conversation with you um, on the about the fast power of the word and the scriptures were given during the week or on point as on bullseye. Um, it gave me clarity and instructions in my prayer, how to recalibrate my posture. Awesome. 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 That is great. Thank you. Elder Khan. I appreciate that feedback coming from you. Thank you for the feedback um, that came from Minister Lester, that came from Sister Reed, um, anybody else that came from Dr. Nixon, anyone else, any questions, praise the name of the Lord. Um, before I just spend a few moments um, with you in the word of God, any other questions, any other questions, um, this is a groundbreaking ceremony. And what that mean by that is usually when you sit here, a groundbreaking ceremony, uh, we are talking about, um, going into a new building, uh, foundation, uh, of a new property, breaking ground on a new business or a new building project, um, new construction, groundbreaking. But tonight I want to come to you from a new perspective or another perspective, if you will. Um, the groundbreaking that we are talking about is in the spirit realm. And then we are also talking about the grounds of the heart, the grounds of the heart, the grounds of the heart. Um, the Bible says in the book of Jeremiah, I believe it's 9 and 17, that the word of the Lord says, that the heart is desperately wicked and who and who can know it um, that's what the bible says he's talking about the heart and the ground of the heart so when i say this is a ground breaking ceremony i'm not talking about um, um, new building construction or uh, subdivision development. I'm not talking about any of that. I'm talking about the foundation in which God is laying and building for this new season in your life. Um, since September, we entered into a new season and the Lord is doing a new thing. Listen to me. The Lord is doing a new thing. One of the things that the Spirit of the Lord um, talked to me about um, during my time of, uh, of consecration was some things that I was planning and working on and some things that I felt like I was going to work hard um, to achieve. The Lord says, you're building and working on that because that is connected to a picture that I gave you a long time ago. And these were some challenges that you experienced from that time to this time. And he says, I want you to stop doing that because there is a new thing that I'm doing and I am causing a refreshing to come in your life so that you can get ready for the new work so that you can be perfected so that you can be built up so that you can be renewed by the new work but hear me what I'm saying to this the bible says from glory to glory uh, um, teaches us that we go from faith to faith. And so there are so many things that are happening in our atmosphere. It's hard for you to keep up if you do not have a spiritual eye. Two things are going to happen. You are going to allow things to come and take 
resident in your ground, the ground of your heart, and you not even know it. And you not even know it. It's some things could creep up right up on you and you don't even know. There are some experiences that you can have and you can walk out with residue. And because it's become a part of your life, you not even know that it is a part of your life. And that there are thorns and thistles and rocks uh, uh, um, uh, around the ground of your heart to where you're not able to allow the new word to take root. Please listen to me. We're we're in somewhere else new. We we the door has been closed. The 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 our our bodies we have been washed spiritually. We have been washed uh 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 um um in our minds our hearts have been washed um um our consciousness have been sprinkled um there has been a washing of the water of the word and, and there are some things there are some relationships that you won't be able to go back to as you used to there are some things that you uh will not air some ideas and some concepts and some jobs and some addresses and things like that and the lord is saying you know, that is that's what I was doing then. That that has nothing to do with where you are right now. And so the Lord started talking to me about the ground. He starts talking to me about our ground. And when David got finished fasting, he went on into a new season of his life. The only thing that you need to understand um, and better about a season is that you fasted off something old. You fast that you tore a veil of something old oh, oh, you rent Baba talks about us having um old wine skins how can you put new wine the new wine is um weightier um it has a new weight in it and if you have tears. I mean, tonight I have on a, a ripped jacket and it's distressed, uh, um, but it was made to look like that. But I'm telling you that your spiritual uh, connection or your spiritual uh, body should not have any distress in it. It should be finely woven together so that you are able to embody, that you're able to maintain, that you're able to hold uh, uh, this new wine that the Lord is pouring into your life so that you don't leak. Good evening, Sister Justina Major in the Bahamas. So listen, we have to start taking care of the grounds of our heart. We have to understand that it is this harvest um, that the Lord is giving us and ushering out in our direction, direction placed on based on what he has planted, what has been ordained, what has uh uh what has been planned he says i know the thoughts that i think toward you thoughts of peace not of evil some is good right um to give you a you you know hope for a future and and it talks about us having an expected end and so when you talk about caring for the ground of your heart we got to be careful um that we are not religious because religiously, what you could do is um, you can um, have a form of godliness. Ooh, that's good. And you can deny the power thereof. Um, denying the power thereof. You have a form of godliness. And I was talking to you um, yesterday about the drought and about how trees, no matter how tall they are or wide or round they are, if the roots are not watered properly or um, are, are fed properly or nurtured, then a drought um, can come and wind, wind uh, will come and winds and harsh weather will call the tree to topple over. And so that's how we got trees down um, from, from, from inclement weather. Just allow me to share these notes that the Lord put in my spirit as I was praying. 
Um, he said that religion will deaden you to new and fresh things. Religion, religion will, 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 will anything that you do on a routine, anything that you do in a way where you feel like that is the way to do it. Um, that's why I came at you tonight with some questions. Uh, uh, um, and you should feel a freshness. You should feel a difference. Um, there should be a lightness or, or either if you haven't gotten to that place yet, then you ought to be able to say to me, I'm still on my journey. The Lord has given me more grace and more urgency to continue. Um, but the spirit of the Lord began to talk to me and he said, religion will deaden you. It'll, it'll, it'll deaden you to new things and to fresh actions. You won't be able to adjust. You won't be able to uh, uh, discern. You won't be able to get acclimated into the new things that the Lord is doing. And the gardening process is that process that God talks about in his word. Um, and so in the natural of uh, the planting culture is a culture that demands harvest. Listen, the planting culture is a culture that demands a harvest, my Lord. And so um, when we have uh, um, a, a form of godliness, sometimes we have a tree that's planted, but the roots are withered and, and, and they don't have enough um, um, nutrients in them to push forth any fruit. And I believe fasting causes our hearts to open, the ground of our hearts to open, and for the word of God to go in and and supernaturally gives us an infusion fusion in our roots. And that, that process of our fellowship with the Lord and seeking of the Lord, that he comes in to this garden of our heart and he begins to reconstruct where there's been worms, where there has been damages from from inclement uh, weather in our lives I believe that's where the Lord comes in and he restores praise the name of the Lord and so um, um, so you have to keep the ground of your heart moist and you do that by um, you know re, you know if I say to you read the word every day what some people will do and they will go to their Bible plan or they will go to their devotion and they will read that and still won't be impacted. You'll come to this prayer forum every week, uh, twice a week. You'll come on Sunday, Sundays and you'll come on Thursdays and you still won't grow and you still won't be impacted because there is a form of godliness. That's why I don't get off um, into just um, giving presbytery to people because a lot of times what presbytery does to a person if it's not coming in season and if it's not coming by the anointing because as a prophet I will always see more than I say and I might see some things happening in your life but that doesn't mean that the spirit of the Lord is upon me to speak to you or to talk to you you have to be able to harness what you see a lot of times what the Lord is doing when he does that is that he's just showing me who you are. He's showing me where you are. He's showing me how to pray. He's showing me uh, um, things that could be a stumbling block in our relationship. And so not to you as the class in session, uh, um, um, people who are fellowshipping and, and organizing and, 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 and that we come to a place of, of fellowship. Um, but I'm just saying specifically specifically. So when the Lord shows you something, uh, um, um, it's, it's not always for me to say where you're having a challenge or where, how you need to grow. You have to have a personal relationship with God. And so I'm not here to ignite you and to send you off with presbytery. And you think that because you got a prophetic word that you line up, that you think that you got a prophetic word, that your life is pleasing to God. Your life don't necessarily have to be pleasing to God to get a prophetic word. You know, prophets speak to your potential or either they speak to your demise. 
um, in, 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 in obedience to what the Lord has said. And so clearly I'm talking to you tonight about moisturizing the grounds of your heart so that you don't remain the same. Moisturizing the ground. More than anything, what Jesus did was he taught. Any, the more than anything that Jesus did in his ministry on earth was that he taught. Yes, he went about doing good. Yes, he went about get, um, do, performing miracles. But the abundance of what Jesus did for the disciples in preparation of how he they were to live in his absence um, was he taught them. He taught them. He taught them plainly in an intimate setting, um, just face to face, some very uh, basic um, things that he taught them. He taught them things like he taught them from parables, things that they were able to understand. He taught them right where they lived and it wasn't anything far fetched where they couldn't understand or grab a hold to what he meant. And so tonight I want you to realize before you go into um, the remaining part of your month and endeavoring to the end of this, of this year, as we know it on 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 um, on this side of, of the calendar, um, those of us that follow the Jewish candle, cal calendar, we are already in the first quarter of our new year. Amen. Praise the Lord. So keep the the soil of your heart moist and make sure that it is going to the root of your heart. Don't just read a passage and you read the passage. It didn't change you. It didn't challenge you. It didn't charge you. Um, it, you know, you just read it and you just say you had a, you had a five second prayer uh, or you had a one hour prayer that was ineffective and it didn't challenge you. It didn't charge you. It didn't build you. Why? Because you're doing it to satisfy the consciousness of, of your religion. So we see this kind of formality with plants. Again, new ground, new ground, new ground. We see this formality with plants. So, um, so just like with plant life, you don't want to overwater it. So if you get a lot of the word and you haven't digested it, it haven't gone down into your uh, roots. A lot of times what people do is they drown from the word. You, 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 you start drowning from the word. That, that means you are, um, it's, it's not, you, you receiving so much to what you have is, is, is not being absorbed and it's not being utilized. Um, in other words, there may not be enough sunlight. You may not be having enough trials in your life for you to use um, that word or, or whatever the case may be. And then sometimes we, it's too dry. Sometimes your soil is too dry and your regiment of water, when you are going through a lot of things in your life, you got to have a regiment that is different than when you were sitting in the shade. Plants that are in the shade don't need the type of water that plants that are outside Need. So it's two different regiments and you have to have the wisdom to know what you need for your life, not to please man, not to show up on these live streams just to say you were present or not to go to your regular Bible studies or to flip through anybody's book to say you did your due diligence. But the Lord knows, my God, but the Lord knows where his word is sits in your life. He knows if that brought you closer to him. He knows if the eyes of your understanding has been enlightened. God knows. And when you are fasting, there are times like that where you have to say, Lord, during this time, I need you to open up the eyes of my understanding because a lot of things I do, I do them because I am told or it's expected and I don't really do it because I feel you or I love you. A lot of times people, they do what they are expected to do or they do what that what is being recommended to do and they do it without understanding and being truly connected to it. It's, it's called not having a fruitful understanding. So we are containers then. 
Um, we are containers then. Um, there is a terminology in the plant environment that is called deadhead. You know when there's deadhead because, um, you know, the leaves start turning brown, um, um, the, 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 the petals start falling off, uh, the, 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 the stem starts get, you know, leaning over. It's called deadhead. What needs to happen in that scenario is that you got to go in and you have to pull off what is is remaining you got to pull off the leaves you got to pull up some stems sometimes because that is an indication that the that the, whatever is being fed to it is killing it or um, you're not receiving enough of what you need so that you can stay alert. And so um, I will say this about drinking coffee. Coffee is more of a habit than it habit than it is um, effectiveness. People who drink coffee on a regular basis are rarely impacted by caffeine because you have a caffeine um, tolerance. Your body is used to it. So for you to have a greater impact of caffeine, you, 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 what you have to do is you'll have to get you a double or a triple shot or you have to have you a quad from, um, from your local cafe. Um, so I wanna say to you that a daily watering a daily watering will keep you from um, being all dried out. It will keep you from being dried out. And so when there is a drought that you've been away from God, you've been away from prayer, you've been away from the fellowship of the saints, then you will begin to go into drought. You will become what the planning industry calls deadhead. There will be some withering away somehow. And what I'm working on as I'm with you on um, week in and week out, there are some of you where the Lord is has been tilling and scratching at some um, some of the places where your roots are to give you nutrition, where there have been an infection of bugs, where you have been bitten off from life, where you've had severe storms uh, or the outside elements have come in and swooped down and attacked your life. Um, in some way. And so um, I thank you, Holy Ghost, for saying that you think that you're okay as long as there are no relationships um, that, that is in trouble. But really the climate of your life really tells God where you are when there is a relationship crisis or when um, something in your life is not going the way you, you, you want it to go. Then your reservoir or the strength of your roots will tell him and will tell you too where exactly where you stand. Having a fasted life gets rid of that mentality or that mindset um, where you feel like you could just be around the saints or be around the word without being impacted. Being um, in, in a place where you are really fasting and seeking the Lord, it really causes you to kick in to that place to where you're not pretending, where you're really crying out to God, where you really need God, unless, like I said, I've said so many times before, that you are going through the process of not eating, but you're not praying. You're, you're going through the process of not eating, but you're not worshiping. You're not in fellowship with the Lord. That's the only way. And until you are with other people who have an ax, if you're with other people who have an ax, then they can tell if you are dull or if you are sharp. And God will orchestrate people scenarios and situations to come in your life and 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 um shake your tree a little bit just to see let get your attention and let you know you're not where you think you are so after giving you that information i want to ask again are there any questions that related to the fast are there any questions um that you want to ask about the state uh, um, that, 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 you know, that, that you are, that you were in during, during the fast or some experiences that you had during the fast that you didn't understand, um, lest we make an assumption that all of the things spoken prior to this moment 
are true and accurate in your life, that indeed the Lord has been tealing um, in, in your uh, time of fellowship and prayer. And he's shown you um, just how to cultivate um, um, the pot or the soil or the place in which you are planted in his word. So I ask you again, are there any questions? Are there any questions? I know that there is a lag in me asking a question or me saying a thing and the, and the receptive receptivity. I know there's just a few moments, but I want to um, give you an opportunity to ask. I want to give you an opportunity to ask. Any questions related to your fast? Anything that you had to ask? Any experience that you had that you weren't sure about? Because the next fast coming up, uh, it'll be a three-day fast. And I, and I will start teaching and giving you information on And I'll let you know where I'll be. And I'll let you know how you can register if you want to be in the sanctuary where I will be um, um, during, the, during the prayer meeting. Um, but um, are there any questions? If you haven't had a chance to sow this week during the fast, I want to invite you to do so. The cash app where you could do that is the dollar sign Natasha N. Davis, dollar sign Natasha N. Davis, dollar sign Natasha N. Davis on cash app. Or you could go to my web page and sew securely with your credit card at natashadavis.org. Natashadavis.org. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I wanted to give you a moment to sow. I want to give you a moment to ask questions, make comments um, before we continue because Thursday night will be in a whole different ballpark. So I wanted to give you an opportunity to ask your questions. I'm not saying that you won't have an opportunity to ask your questions in the future, but specifically because we just came down off of a fast, I wanted to give you opportunity to ask warfare results um discomforts in the body it doesn't have to be on a particular thing but this is the planting of the lord this is the work of the lord this is how god renews this is how he protects and so if you feel like you didn't get an answer during this time be patient because the things that we fast about God knows in the spirit what you have need of. He knows what's coming down the line. He knows how to strengthen you. He knows how to fortify you. So please don't get discouraged if you feel like you didn't get an answer. You feel like you didn't get a breakthrough. Trust me, the seeds that you sown that were planted and the work that was done in the spirit realm is far greater than you can ever see. So it doesn't mean that your time with God was in vain unless you really didn't tap in. Amen. All right. Well, I guess that's that's our time and our moment together on tonight. Um, there is one question that I want to ask since um, since there has been a change in the time on Sundays. Um, how do you feel about 6.30? Is, is that still a good time? Uh, or did you want to go an hour back to 5.30? Just for Sundays. How do you feel about that? Is keeping the time at 6.30 okay? Keeping the time at 6.30, okay? For Sundays, during the during the time where there has been a change in the time, if you all are okay with that, then 
um, is definitely okay with me, but I wanted to see if this time change um, during this time of the year would impact um, other people. Yes, 630 is good. Okay, Sam, that's my goddaughter. I say to y'all sometimes that I have a biological child and then I have a goddaughter. Um, so Courtney Sims, um, this little beauty right here, this is my god baby. She's not really a baby, but um, this is my god. This is my beloved god daughter. So if y'all ever see her somewhere she don't need to be, then y'all call me immediately. I'm just, I'm just kidding. She good and saved. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, let's see. Uh, prophetess doing the fast. I found it a bit hard during the daytime where there was always some attractions. or Is it attractions or distractions for me? I found the night was best for me. All right. So, um... Concerning this question right here, um, Sister Justine, I didn't realize in this shirt, in this picture that you have on your glow shirt, you look so cute, girl. That is really adorable. Um, so, Sister Justine, I want to address what you just said. Um, not sure if you work a job um, during the daytime. If you work a job during the daytime, um, sometimes you could you are going to be distracted because you work a job. Uh, uh, you know, simply because of how our attention span is. Uh, we have an attention span that we have to have our focus on um, work. We have to have our focus sometimes on our children. We have to have our focus on a number, a number of things during the daytime. Um, during the daytime, I want to say a, a number of things. I'm glad you brought this up. Thank you. It's a great comment. And so during the daytime, um, there are a lot of different things going on. There's a different type of warfare during the day. Um, your body is challenged automatically. Um, your mind is, is automatically challenged to, uh, for, for, uh, for your attention span. The brain is already, excuse me, um, challenged uh, on what to focus on and how to prioritize. Here's a couple of things that I want to say uh, for people like Sister Justina. My daughter kind of had the same issues. Um, um, but Genesis is in college and her mindset is at a place to where she's learning to prioritize. So, um, you know, she found it challenge Jean trying to figure out what to put first and because she had some deadlines and she had some um, demands on her schedule in school she found it hard to stick to her habits of fasting so she was she was challenged um she stuck to the fast but she was challenged um um uh, in her distraction process her focus process, she was a little distracted and was kind of um, struggling to stay focused. So what, had, what helped with her was knowing that at 10 o'clock or 1030, she knew that she needed to go and pray. And then all these other, all that in between, she had to have school. She had to, you know, be at the lab. She had to handle business. She had to make calls. She had to write papers. Um, and so her daytime was really, really busy. And so, um, you know, I asked her to have a time and then she knew at three o'clock, she would go outside and take a break, 
walk the grounds of the campus and then she would walk and pray for five or ten minutes and then she would come back inside and so also um i encouraged her to put sticky notes on her went on her mirror in her dorm room she's kind of confined a little bit so to write these sticky notes and put scriptures on her mirrors or on her front door where she's about to go out, things like that. So if you're working from home at your workstation, you can write on sticky notes and just put up um, or, or maybe tape a scripture to your telephone. You can set alarms on your phone just to break up the monotony of so many demands being on your life um, where you set at 115 you need you want to you you're set to listen to this 5 minute worship song right this is just for you to come to a place of acknowledging making an a affirmation you said yes correction distractions i'm not working just home in the house okay so um so one of those things is that if you're uh, in a stable environment and you have to work you don't have to go outside um you know, if you pray in the spirit, that is a good way to um, to elevate above your mind. Warfare takes place in the mind. And so if the enemy is trying to distract you and if there is a lack of discipline on how not to think or how not to worship or how not to praise, um, I just want you to know during the during the daytime anyway there is a lot of airwaves of warfare so if you pray in the spirit praying in the spirit is a good way to rise above distractions um putting scriptures in your house and setting alarms on your telephone um, um 10 minutes every hour or if it's every two hours for 30 minutes, or if it's 15 minutes every hour, just consistency breaks distraction. Consistency breaks distraction. And then also uh, another thing that I taught Genesis was pray out loud. Now, shouting don't mean effectiveness. Um, I have a very intense ministry. So... Um, the intensity that is on the inside of me comes across in a very exuberant way. So I show a lot of animation. But really, if I'm walking around the house and I'm just praying, I'm really talking in my prayer time like this. And there are times where people feel like shouting means warfare. Not all the time. Um, but you can just as easily cast the devil out by just being in this tone of voice that, you know, a lot of people who operate diligently in deliverance, they don't wrestle with devils. They, they don't, they don't, they don't do all of that. They have the authority. And they just say, come out. They're not, they're not playing with it. The, they're not playing with the devil. And so with that being said, I would say practice praying out loud, um, just at a, at a, at a very low tone. Um, just go throughout your house and read Psalms 34, Psalms 37, Psalms 91, Psalms uh, 51, Psalms 27, Psalms 103. Those Psalms are Psalms that help um, connect you and reunite you with God from a perspective of, of seeking him and claiming what he is doing in your life through the scripture. So when it comes down to distractions, praying um, aloud, just like you would be talking to somebody, praying in the spirit, and then setting an alarm to say to your mind, hey, this is the hour of prayer, or this is the minutes of prayer, or um, worship, this is the moment of worship, breaking it up and causing yourself to be more regimented breaks up distractions. Um, having a list before you on the things that you are praying about. So if you're going to be praying for your son, praying for your nephew, praying for your mom, praying for your sister, then having like a list right in front of you. Um, this is not really a sign, um, but it's a note that I made to myself one day. Uh, but on the top of this, it's like a little sign. But it's dry erase. 
So I dry erase this all the time and I write little notes on here, but um, it, it, it's just a way that I keep on my, um, I keep it on my desk that if there is a reminder that I need to write, do that, do that. And I promise you that your distractions will be less. That's why I encourage people to pray the word of God, not just the word you know, but pray the word and the scriptures that you do not know. Let me know if that helped, please. Let me know if that if that helped. Um, the guidelines that I gave, the pictures that I posted on my Facebook page, taking time out to 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 meditate on that out loud five to ten minutes every hour um, is a good way to discipline yourself to stay focused. As in Isaiah 26 and 3. I would keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stay on you. Thank you. Very good question. Because once you discipline the mind and you discipline um, your thought life, that is half the battle. So very good, 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 good question. Thank you, Sister Justina. I love it. Is there any other questions? Somebody write a disciplined thought life in the comments. Discipline thought life in the comments. And that's not an easy thing, but it is it's achievable um, in the Holy Ghost. It's achievable in the Holy Ghost because the last thing that the enemy wants you to do is to be focused. He doesn't want you to be focused on prayer. He doesn't want you to be focused in thinking the word of God. He doesn't want you to be focused. So that's a really good question. Thank you, Sister Justina, for sharing. Anything else? Anything else? I will add to that, um, that where your dominant thoughts are um, shows a sign of, 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 uh, either worryation, anxiety, or rulership. Oh, that's good. So where your dominant thought life is, it shows a sign of rulership, um, anxiety, worryation. Um, it, 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 so if your mind is going to be obsessively, Thinking about a job, a job, a job, a job, paying my bills, paying my bills, paying my bills. That is where the rulership of your thoughts are coming. That is that is the height. That is the pinnacle. That is the concern. So it keeps circling around the forefront of your thinking. And so what the word of God does in your way of being diligent every five minutes, um, three times in an hour, um, reciting three different scriptures, reciting the same scripture. It is your internal voice. It is the word that you know. This is where um, Jesus used the word in Matthew chapter four during the fast, right? You know, um, things that we think about hard to get a focus or um, a broken concentration. Um, Jesus said to the devil, he said, um, Man lives by bread, doesn't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That question that you just brought up is so rich, Sister Justina. So thank you so very much for sharing that. I'm going to incorporate that in um, posting this week. I'm going to incorporate that in the messages um, um, this week, uh, starting Thursday through to the next fast. Um, um, I'm not saying that it's demonic, um, but I do want to say to you that one of the ways that the enemy try to wrangle us and, um, and hold us hostage is through our thought life. Um, lust, uh, worryation, um, um, covetousness. Uh, you start to look out and see and measure yourself by other people and you start liking and loving what other people have or, or, or doing that you can't focus or concentrate on 
what God has in store for you. I'm not saying that's where she is, but I'm saying the process as a whole. That's why the concept minding my own business is so important because it helps me. Um, 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 it helps me not to uh, give my thoughts to distractions. It helps me not to make something else so important, right? So MMOB society, the mob society is minding my own business. It's a society of the undistracted and a distraction is it, it is it is a matter that don't uh, it is a matter that don't require my attention. Right. Matters that don't require my attention. What do I give my attention to? I give my attention to the word of God. I give my attention to prayer. I give my attention to how I manage my life. I'll say this and then we can dismiss if there is no more questions. I give my t attention now to my own bank account. I talk to God about how I manage my money. I talk to God about connecting me to the people who can help me increase and better my credit. I talk to God about sending people into my life on um, how to to manage business. Um, I talk to God about that. Um, a multiplicity of things. He will usually send me a person who is a specialist in an area so that my life and my thoughts are not just on one particular area that's worrying me. Okay, this is a concern. So I thank you, Lord, that there are no limitations in my life, that you want me to succeed. You want me to excel. So I thank you that you're going to cause, um, 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 me to manage my thoughts well. And I will tell you, since I have taken on the mob society, um, my life has really uh, uh, gotten much fuller and richer because I'm undistracted. I am undistracted by the stuff that used to plague my mind. I used to stuff stuff that's outside of my control, people's opinions about me that's outside of my control. But what I can do is I can speak to my savings account every day. I can manage my banking, my checking account every day. Uh, I can speak to my credit. Uh, I can talk to those who are credit professionals. I can talk to people about situations that, I, that concern me, so to speak. And I get the success of that that from the word of God. So there's a lot of things that we now have to thought, talk, to think about. And there's one thing that you have to learn. I had to learn is, um, I have a personality, uh, uh, that sometimes that something, you know, that my people might say to me, if it's petty or whatever the case may be, if it irritated me or whatever the case may be, I would have to say that was so stupid. Oh, that was so dumb. What sense does that make? And after I acknowledge uh, that it's stupid or I don't need to dwell on that and I move on from it. People try to be so deep and they tell me, oh, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get, no, you irritated. No, you bothered. Don't walk around here talking about you not bothered. No, you bothered, idiot. You know, not not you calling the person that, but whatever you thought about, whatever emotions um, that came uh, came out of that, it was like, you know what, what sense did that make? And you acknowledge, you know, that hey, that just didn't make good sense to me. But don't you spend hours thinking about nonsense? You know, call it what it is, and you move forward from that. You call it what it is, and you move forward from that. Hope I helped you. That was my aim <laughs> to help you. Amen. That was my aim. My aim was to help. So I, I hope I helped you. Uh, I was having a conversation with my daughter earlier and she started asking questions. She started asking. I love when she asks questions because when she's asking questions, that's letting me know she's thinking. Um, and so if there was something that I didn't teach her or something that information she got or whatever the case may be, whatever it is, we're, we're close. So anything, sex, men, money, um, 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 how to, how to communicate with people or whatever the case may be, all the things, um, that I didn't know at 19, a lot of stuff she is asking me about, and I'm glad, and I love that she asked me 
questions. Um, she get an opportunity to get in, enlightened. She get an opportunity um, to not just get the finality from another 19 year old. She gets to get a more informed opinion or more um, information about it. And she can now make decisions based on the information, not just limited sources uh, from her age group or from her emotions. So I love when questions come forward. Um, um, out of, out of my, out of my, from my children. I love when questions come forward. They're not children. You see Courtney right there. She's a young adult. Genesis is a young adult. So, um, y'all let me know. Anything else? We 15 minutes past our time. Anything else? All right. We're going to say good night. And I want to bless you. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the questions that came up. We thank you right now in the name of Jesus for all you said and done through this time um, tonight. Uh, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus for Sister Justina. Thank you right now, Lord God, that you are going to construct a strong thought life in her life through your word, through worship, through fellowship. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for causing walls of armor and strength to be built up in her mind. I thank you for being causing her to be fortified. Thank you for the helmet of salvation. Thank you for the blessed breastplate of righteousness. Lord God, that she is going to cast down thoughts and imaginations. Father, I thank you right now that no concerns but penetrate her believing. I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that there will be no dart, no arrow, Lord God, that will be able to penetrate what she believes and how she thinks in the name of Jesus. Bless these, your people, cause them to have peace, cause them to be fortified, cause them to have sweet sleep. Your Bible, your word says, Lord God, that you will give your beloved peace and sleep. I thank you for sweet sleep coming over your people. I thank you, Lord God, for strengthening their arms, their legs, their chest, their back, their everything, Lord God, physically and spiritually. Strength on your people, armor on your people, defense on your people in the spirit and in the natural is our prayer tonight in Jesus name. Amen. Be blessed, people of God. I love y'all. I'll see you back on Thursday night.